everything breaking. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is our intro to game development. <laughs> By the way, these slides are scuffed. Uh, this is just to show you stuff. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's start. So intro to game development. First of all, what is a game? Uh, the definition given by Eddie, the wonderful definition, is a game played by electronically manipulating images by a computer program on a television screen or other display screen. <laughs> all right, so uh, this definition looks very complicated, but essentially what this is is that anything that is fun that you can play. Yes, and uh, uh, <laughs> this is just a slide to filler slide, I guess. Uh, the next slide is going to be the types of games. Jake, do you want to explain some of these? Uh, okay, so there's going to be console games, which you can run within the console of whatever IDE you're using. You can run it in shell as well, but I don't recommend that. Uh, and then there's window games where with, well, we're going to be working with Pi Game. Pi Game has like special API to help you like set up uh, windowed games and it makes your development a lot easier. Uh, and then on the right, we have things like platformers, which are like um, ga Sorry, games I, like I Mario, All right? You have side scroll in it. That could that can be infinite things like Flappy Bird, where like the map just keeps on generating randomized pipes, and virtual reality massively multiplayer online role playing games, which are things like <laughs> Sword Art Online and Minecraft. <laughs> As you can see, there are many different types of games. So like this is technically not a like a perfect definition of games. Like they're very there are many different broad types of games, and as you'll see. Uh, we can actually make a lot of different types of games and like it's really really broad like you can have this or you can just have a boring console game right so uh here are some examples of popular games see if you can <laughs> see if you can see some of them and <laughs> what they are <laughs> see if you can uh see uh mention if you can put in the chat what you think some of these games are <laughs> I just called console games boring. It's not as boring. It's just there's not as much detail you can put into it because there's only that much detail you can put into the shell. Like apart from that, uh, we can even show like I think you uh, for those of you who did intro to Python, we actually that you actually did a bit of console games. But the only thing is that you you can't use a lot of um, dip, you can't put a lot of difficulty or just stuff into a console game as you can with, you know, a window game or just more complex. <laughs> yes. Yes. Also, where are these games? <laughs> what right. like the bottom says player two has wind. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually super mar marocrat. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, what, what the only the, the, this slide was not only put as a meme, it was also to kind of showcase the many different amount of games that we can have. So like a lot of these are kind of open world, like uh, the boring game that uh, Jake plays called Genshin Impact. What do you? <laughs> it's the also top cooler game. games, <laughs> like Minecraft, as you can see. That's definitely a valid picture. <laughs> There's uh, games like Fortnite, which are uh, multiplayer games. We'll talk about those as well. Uh, multiplayer games. Uh, there are even games which are platformers, like Super Mario Bros. Or, <laughs> or Hollow Knight, right? The so games can get as simple as tic-tac-toe, but can be advanced as Minecraft, right? So, you know, many different types of games. Let me see if, there, if there's some uh, witty <laughs> remarks in the chat. <laughs> Fortnite. <laughs> all right, these are all Fortnite jokes. Uh, <laughs> the PS. <laughs> yes, as you can see, there are many uh, different. Um, many people like many different games. This is why there are many popular ones. And okay, so now you probably your question is, are we going to make these popular games? Sadly, no, because these require a huge dev team and uh, lots of hours, which we don't have. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to make some simpler games. Yay! <laughs> so we're going to make games that are, first of all, they're not very hard, but they're also not really simple, right? So we're gonna go from the simpler games and at the end, we're going, 
going to make, you know, even harder games, right? Because maybe by the fourth or fifth week, we're going to make start making platformers or scrolling games. And those are going to be, you know, kind of like the more popular games that you see out there, right? Like, for example, you have uh, Minecraft, which is kind of like a scrolling game, right? You, you know that Minecraft has these blocks or chunks that load uh, that load every time. And these are kind of things that we will consider when making those kinds of games. Again, platformers as well, almost all, all of the uh, cooler games out there are platformers, especially like the uh, good old Flash games. <laughs> so yeah, but we're going to start with the simpler ones like Tic Tac Code in 2048 and move on. Also, there's one more thing is that you should be excited for this is because after this, we're actually going to be doing a game jam after learning these types of games. And it's going to be a theme. We're going to announce a theme closer to the game jam itself, but you're going to get to you know either work by yourself or with others to create a really cool game. So that's essentially the lesson plan. We're going to, and each of these games has a different concept to it. Right? We're going to talk about the concept of Tic-Tac-Toe and 2048 and everything else, but each of these games is a concept that you should learn and you can incorporate into your own game, right? So when you're, uh, so when you're making a game, you can even start making a game now because the, the concepts that we teach can be applied to any game, right? Like for example, Tic-Tac-Toe has a multiplayer aspect that can be applied to any game. Platformers have a collision aspect. Those can be applied to any game, right? So no matter what game you're making, you're going to benefit a lot from what we're learning. <clears throat> That's what I'm trying to say. And yeah, <laughs> one more thing in the chat. Watch like five, you will take part. Hey, more of you are gonna take part because we're gonna give an incentive, hopefully. <laughs> yes. The incentive is uh, we will clap for you. <laughs> yeah, free don't worry, clout. Don't worry, hopefully there'll be an incentive. Yes, rip flash, moment of silence for flash. Game, <laughs> game jam, yes, game jam, yes. Uh, so <laughs> we're getting paid. <laughs> yes, you're getting paid okay. in... <laughs> A shout out from Jake on his stream. Yes, Club Cloud. Yes. Okay, but like one thing you're going to get Club Cloud. And second of all, we're going to showcase these games on our Instagram. And maybe we're going to have a, even maybe a lesson. We're just going to showcase the games that you've made. And uh, everybody's going to see them. We're going to play them. We're going to use them as our them. advertisements and get more <laughs> participants. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, they're going to be, uh, the Jane Jam is going to be really cool. So don't worry about that. We're going to talk about more about it before the event actually happens. But stay tuned for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh is game jam like roblox in the way uh <laughs> not really i mean kind of because in roblox you can also make your own games but this is going to be using pi game or any game engine uh but we're gonna ho hopefully you can use a game engine if you really want to use roblox we'll figure something out but <laughs> <laughs> we're <laughs> hopefully we're gonna use the things that we've learned during pi game to do it Oh no, Pi game. Yes. Oh, right. I, I was getting ahead of myself. Yes. But we're basically we're going to use, um, you, you can use Greenfoot if you want to make the game, but we're going to be teaching Pi game. So, you know, it's just that because you guys have learned Pi game throughout intro to Python or Python CP. Uh, for the Java CP people, Python is very easy to take up. It, also, if you know Java, it's really easy to take up Python. Python is a pseudo code based language, so it's really easy to understand as well. I'll talk more about Python and Pi game in the next slide, but. How about Unity? Okay, so for diff different game engines, I think for the game jam, we'll just allow any game engine as long as it's like not meme. <laughs> well, we'll talk more about this. Uh, again, we'll talk more about this closer to the game jam, but for now, we're just going to teach people how to make games. So even if they don't have any experience, they can kind of make a really cool game in the game jam. Even if you're like, if you're really experienced and you have this game engine that you really want to use, or if you're good, that's going to be something for the game jam, right? We can uh, You can obviously use it during the game jam, but this first few weeks are going to be to prepare you so that during the game jam, you're going to actually be able to make a really great game that you're proud of. That's, you know, well, Pygame is pretty much drawing stuff on a window. The rest you have to do yourself. Uh, I don't know what that was exactly referring to, but that is correct. Uh, it's usually, it's mostly drawing <laughs> instructions on a screen. It's kind of displaying and like everything else you kind of do yourself, but you can also call functions. Uh, everybody is getting <laughs> ourselves, but that is fine. They use HTML again. We'll talk about this culture to the web, to the game jam, but if there's a language that you really like to use, probably yes. <laughs> As well, you <laughs> okay, this is this is getting this is getting jokes. All this right, this is getting out of hand. <laughs> this is getting out of hand. Oh my god, Roblox. Okay, <laughs> I was worried it would be like Greenfoot. Okay, you can use Greenfoot. Like this is it's it's really cool if you want to use it, but we're not going to teach it. Uh, it's pretty easy to use. Okay, Eddie. <laughs> All right, this is, this is, okay, well, I'm going to get back to this later. I'm going to get back to this later. All right, so <laughs> our next aspect is going to be on game aspects. So here we're just going to outline some of the game aspects you've learned. 
I think in, um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Albert, you can speak more about this, but I think in uh, Intro to Python, you guys talked a bit about this, like the aspects of a game. I think you guys did some of the, uh, some of them. I don't I think. think... <clears throat> Wait, what are, what are game aspects? <laughs> like, like, it's just the really simple ones, like graphics and decisions and like game loop and stuff. I think you've done them, like the, the, the projects that you've done. I guess we didn't like teach them explicitly, but like we sort of taught them like, like we taught the concepts that you would need to sort of execute these game aspects. Okay. But I think this would still be helpful for everyone here. Yeah. So basically in terms of game aspect, you kind of touched on it in intro to Python. If you were in Python CP, Java CP, that's fine. And these are really easy to learn. Basically the simplest game aspect that I can probably think of is something, is something like the game loop, right? So every game has to have a main loop that happen that updates every time. Like for example, let's talk about a simple game. Uh, I let, let's just do another simple game like Hollow Knight, right? So like in Hollow Knight, you have a player, right, that moves around the screen. So that and like every time you're gonna look for keyboard press, and you're also gonna look for you know if he attacks and you know if the other enemies are attacking them. So that's gonna be your you know game loop. There are many others like for example decisions and graphics and input output. And also what's called a display update idiom, which we're going to talk about. Uh, another, some other concepts are, for example, class and objects, right? When we want to put our game in a form that we can uh, edit really easily instead of changing every single part of our code. Uh, stuff like multi-threading or collisions are also things that are going to be mentioned here. But yeah, <laughs> we are game aspects. Uh, <laughs> yes, since this is a shorter slide, I can look through the uh, non-meme comments. <laughs> You see this. All right. <laughs> I'm going to ignore the, I'm going to ignore the messages now that say like, let me use insert language here, because again, we're going to talk about this closer to the game jam. We can have some fun with that as well. Uh, if you really want to write even, you know, allocate an, an extra week for the game jam, just so that you can have some fun, right? You can even work in groups. Like it, it's honestly, we're teaching game dev to, you know, have fun, to, to have fun and, you know, not to like actual learn important skills. I mean, they are important skills, but the most important thing I think is to still have fun with the games you've made and make a game that you're proud of. All right, <laughs> Rocket, oh my God, more games. Okay, 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 so going down, there's some pretty good game frameworks. Yes, yes, there are very good frame, game frameworks uh, that you can use, for example, with JavaScript, there's something called Phaser. There are many other ones that you can use, but you can just search them up on the internet. We can even do a quick Google search if there's time some, sometime next week or the week after that. I uh, made a game I made in Pygame in JS. It is doable. Yes, you can you can make even games in other languages. So like whatever language you want to use, even if you're not really, you know, good with Python, you can kind of remake it in Python. If you want to make it in your own language, we can talk about that, but probably yes. Use uh, <laughs> all right, Young's comment ignored. All right. So I think that's it for now. The comments just keep on going. I cannot read all of them. <laughs> and then nobody's talking. So we're just gonna move on. <laughs> I'm sorry if this lesson is very cursed, but uh, <laughs> this is what we have. All right. So the next thing we're going to talk about is Pygame. So we're going to use Pygame for our lessons. First of all, you may ask, what is Pygame? Pygame is a framework in Python that lets you make games. Uh, if you don't know already, this is very obvious, but I wanted to show you this. This is Py stands for Python, right? <laughs> and uh, excuse me? For, and G stands for game. Wow. What a surprising title. <clears throat> excuse, excuse me, sir? Huh? Okay, I ask a, can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, because I just joined uh, in a... Um, so I have uh, some point I didn't really understand. Like, uh, what is the uh, really, um, Python means? Oh, what's Python? Oh, Python yeah. is the uh, language that I think you learn in intro to uh, Python or... Uh, it's, it's a programming language. It's a pseudocode-based programming language that uh, we learned in previous lessons of CS Club? Were you here for those? Uh, no. Okay, uh, that's fine. Uh, if you completely don't understand Python, uh, I'm gonna send you probably, we can, we can probably talk about, you know, links or really are ways to learn it, but I think it's really easy to grasp. Just pay it, just like, um, just follow along for this lesson and the next lesson I'll, sh uh, you can DM me on Discord and I'll give you some links or maybe past lessons that you can kind of catch up on. Python, it's, it's not a hard language to learn, don't worry. And we'll explain everything properly, so. Uh, and also uh, the coding we're gonna be doing today is, um, it should be easy to understand even if you don't know Python. If you just know like basic programming concepts, it should be fine. Okay, yeah. Okay, thank you. No problem, no. thank you for asking. <laughs> thank you for asking. All right, 
Uh, more meme comments by Young. No surprise. Uh, <laughs> next week, lesson. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, I'm going to ignore comments from <laughs> Young and, and Eddie. Everyone now. <laughs> All right, MATLAB. Okay, now you're just listing languages. <laughs> More languages. NV chat. Don't worry if you don't know all these languages. These uh, these people are very experienced and they know a lot of languages. Don't worry if you don't know them. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> don't know these languages. Uh, like if you don't know them, you can always search them up on the internet. Or but you don't really have to know all of them, right? If you have a language like Python that you know really well, it can get you really far, right? Like you don't need to know you know, the, all the cool hip languages that are there right now, you can just kind of work with Python and you can still be really decent, right? You don't have to, you know, don't be intimidated. That's what I mean. Like, don't be intimidated by these other languages. All right. <laughs> all right, all right. There are, no, there are no more meme languages. All right, so let me uh, quickly show you like Pygame, I guess. I don't even, basically, uh, first of all, what's Python? Uh, this is Python, right? So like, this is the language that we're going to be using. It's Python. You can just download it if you want. If you have, if uh, this is for people that don't know Python, that haven't downloaded or don't know Python yet, uh, you can download Python. Uh, there are also um, links that you can find online for documentation and stuff. But yeah, this is Python in the gist of it. And then uh, uh, Pygame. Let me see if there's a documentation for this. Yes, this is the. Uh, I mean, this is kind of the uh, official, this is the uh, Pygame documentation. You can look here. This is the uh, Pygame documentation. So this is what we're going to usually mostly be using for our Pygame, right? So uh, we're gonna, again, we're going to use Python, right? You can kind of look through the Python documentation as well. There are some Python references. If you don't know Python, you can kind of look through this. Uh, there's a, there's a, also a really great tutorial that you can learn. Uh, this, is, this is harder than what you should know, but you can kind of look through this if you want, if you don't know Python. But again, we're going to be using Pygame. Uh, this is kind of the um, the framework that we're going to be using for making games. And it's it's really, really great because there are a lot of different functions that you can have. For example, a, a really simple example would be like Pygame dot, uh, dot, yeah. So like Pygame dot display, right? That's going to be a simple one. You have Pygame dot event. So you have multiple of these things that you can see. And if you want to understand what some of them do, so for example, Pygame dot display, this configures the display service and you can click it, right? And then you can say, for example, what about Pygame dot display dot flip, right? So, okay, I'm going to look at this and it says, okay, update the full display service. I want to still learn more. You click on this again. And then it takes you to the official documentation where you can look at, you know, what, the uh, documentation is, for example, here you can give two things. You can give a rectangle or a rectangle list, right? And you can give these parameters, right? These are called parameters that you can put inside it. And then, or you can just call it normally and this will tell you what it does. And you can even search for examples if you want to look for examples in other people's code. Uh, if you want to know how it's used, for example, here, uh, this, they, this person used it probably to uh, put something onto the screen. And uh, that, that's essentially how you can use the documentation of Pygame along with Python to make a really cool project. Yeah, that's the gist of Python and Pygame. Are there any questions about that? Uh, I'm going to try to see if there are any uh, non-meme comments again. This is uh, the, <laughs> it's a lot of messages. So uh, sorry if uh, I'm <laughs> going a bit slow. There's just a lot of messages. Oh yes, intro to Python lesson on a YouTube. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you, Eddie, for posting that link. Uh, this is a really great intro to Python lesson if you don't know Python. Uh, yes, more links. Perfect. All right. Yes, the, the playlist. Yes, thank you. All of you are posting those. You guys teach SQL for game dev. Uh, no, we don't teach SQL for game dev or, because SQL is a database language and also it's a lot harder. To, to understand than Python because Python is the sim most simple one. It's also pseudocode based and it's also like really uh, versatile. So that's why we chose Python um, con concerning, you know, other games, other, other languages. Obviously you can learn, you know, you can use SQL if you want, but uh, it, because of, because most people here um, are more familiar with Python, that's the one we're going to use. <laughs> who, <laughs> made who made Python and what language did they use to do it? Uh, this is a very good question. You can probably search this up, but they probably use a different, more uh, computerized language to make Python, right? They probably use some assembly-based language to make it, but I don't think this matters. You can just use Python. If you want to learn more, search it up. <laughs> and thank you, Albert, for answering. 
I think Python written in C, all right, in C, great. Yes, okay, more cool information. All right, that's it. Uh, so <laughs> I did this slide as another cool filler because we are going to move on to, our, to actually starting to make our game, yay. So <laughs> it is gamer time. Uh, for those of you, this is, a, this is a random tangent, but for those of you that heard the uh, what's, <laughs> what's going Epic Gamers announcement, this is what this is referring to. So <laughs> I've hopefully gave you a kind of a laugh during the announcement. <laughs> epic Gamer time. Yes, Epic Gamer time. All right. So first of all, we're going to look at the console version of Tic-Tac-Toe. It's not going to take too long. Uh, and then we're going to look on the Tic-Tac-Toe window and kind of how to make it. Uh, today, I don't know how much exact time we ha how much total time we have. Maybe we'll just look at the console version. Maybe we'll go to the windowed version a bit. But first of all, I, I don't think I think Albert shared the this uh, code before. I don't know how many of you looked at it. We might talk about it next week and how it connects to windowed. We might just talk about it this week. But let's let's first look at the console code in a simple way. So this is the. Uh, this, this is directly taking from the uh, tic-tac-toe code of the uh, console version. So I'm just going to put it in the chat for now. Uh, we're actually going to do the windowed version of this, but this is something cool that you can kind of look at. Um, this is kind of just, you can see this uh, to get used to kind of what, Pi game, uh, what Python is. And I don't think this uses Pygame, but it is Python. And you can kind of use this to get used to some sort of game loop, right? And, and we'll talk about this too, if we have time and how it connects to the windowed version. But for now, we're going to start with the windowed version. Okay. And we might get back to this later, but all right. So Jake is going to take us through the windowed version of Pygame. So if there are no other questions, uh, that is my intro. And now we're going to get to the console, uh, to the windowed version of Tic-Tac-Toe. Jake, take it away. Hey, so I'm going to be doing this part. I'm going to share. So the IDE I'm going to be using is going to be called PyCharm because it's it's cool it's it's good <laughs> and it's it's cool and it's also very good so like <laughs> here <laughs> so it allows you to have like a major project file which is helpful because then you can just put sub files under that like normally it'd be in like bigger games and bigger um see like in bigger games you'd have like folders you want to like organize your things so like, let's say for images, I wanted uh, a new directory, right? Let's say images, right? Then I put that there and I drag all these into that. So you press okay, and then it moves all those files into images. And like in bigger games, this is gonna be very helpful because like you're gonna be able to easily organize your stuff. That's why I use client game, but undo. I don't want that now. Delete it. Amazing. <laughs> okay. so. <laughs> This is main.py. It's a file I create to um, his small pie chart tutorial now. Just uh, right click to uh, your project name, uh, Python file, new Python file, and then name it whatever you want. Okay, so now that oh, that thing's in the way. Hey guys. Um, I think there's like some people here who might not have downloaded Python. Like onto their computers. Oh, Pi like Pi I'm pretty Pi sure most people here do not have PyCharm either. Um, yes, just using PyCharm because I'm used to it. Okay, yeah. I don't uh, know how Py. I think it's I think it's fine. Right so, uh, if you can, do you want to walk them through how to download Python really quickly, and then like show them how to like how to download Python and download PyCharm, and then they can download it on their own time because it's kind of the same thing on an IDE as it is. Uh, it's just mm -hmm. the same like a project folder format. So just kind of show Ooh. them how to. Would it, be possible, a, would it be possible to yeah. do this via Replit? Uh, it's, it's, it's definitely, right. it's definitely easy it's, in PyCharm though. Yeah, the thing is, I think most people like probably do not have PyCharm, right? Yeah, import. Yeah, you need to like download Pygame as well. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. But I think yeah. I think um, Replit has a Pygame like. It has like exclusive Replit type. Yeah, I heard. I saw it. I try to use it. Do you guys want to try that? Uh, like just take everyone sure. through that. I think it should be Replit. okay, right? Yeah, it has a special type just for Pi game. Yeah. Also, if you don't, if you don't have Pi Charm, you can just use Windows. You can just use the Microsoft Visual Studio Code. 
because that can that works for all language, not only Python. Yeah, but VS Code is also hard to set up, which is what? yikes. It's really not, but okay. It's it's hard. To, it's a lot harder to set up than you know the the actual idle. But yeah, okay. Here. Okay, fine. That's uh, true. I can. I just need to close all my random school. <laughs> oh my god! Why did you not do this? <laughs> all right, it's it's fine. Okay. Fun. Uh. Here, how do I present? It's my just technical now? difficulties. That is now, all. <laughs> share screen. Share my Google. Okay, so here I have my REPL open now. Don't hack me. Uh, new <laughs> REPL. I can just create like a new REPL, and I can just select Pi game here, right? Name your uh, tick tac toe toe. Yeah. Uh, create REPL. Amazing. Now you have your cool pie game REPL, right? Uh, and this should have automatically imported pie game, uh, but I, I don't know, so I'm just going to import it manually as PG. So I import pie game as PG, so it's like easier to write code later on as we'll be using that. Uh, yeah. Sys. Import Honestly. sys, we need that. Import to further pi. explain this, instead of writing pi game dot something, you can write pg dot, which is really easy. This is also kind of used in uh, ML, but it's usually used in game dev when you want to input a library, but you need to use it a lot of time. So just lazyology. <laughs> OK, yeah. And, uh, OK, could you increase the font size? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Can I? I, I <laughs> what is that? Also, do you click the also, setting here? Like you see that gear setting. Also, gear. can you change the, the the mode to light mode? Yeah, I change the light mode. Yeah, I mean, dark mode. Dark mode. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, change the light mode. Light Dude, mode is dark cool. Dark mode. Dark mode. It hurts cool. my no. eyes to look at. All right, no. Cool. Yes. <laughs> light mode for the win. I, I no, get rep one. Sorry. <laughs> he I'm uses. Burning. Oh no. Oh no, guys, we're killing. We're killing our viewers. Oh no. No, no. no, no. <laughs> Jerry okay. uses light mode Discord. So. <laughs> Basically, in, oh my, I'm lagging. Why am I lagging? Import needed imports. That's all. That's that, that's all that does, really. Oh my god. <laughs> and then, you want to explain like what like sys and time are? Okay, uh, sure. <laughs> okay, yeah. so uh, uh, yeah, sys is basically. Oh yeah, actually, Jake, you can explain it. <laughs> huh? if you want? Because you were I'm about not... to explain, I kind of interrupted you. You can no, explain it. You can explain it. I, I'm <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out what I'm trying to do here because. <laughs> All right. So sys stands for system, which is uh, good job. <laughs> a Python library that does a lot of functions that you know does a uh, input and output and a uh, interpreter stuff. So. Uh... <laughs> And uh, there's also time, which is pretty self-explanatory. Time basically helps you keep track of the time and uh, do a lot of stuff with it. Uh, for, for any game, you kind of have to keep track of the time because you need to know at which tick kind of you are or at which second you are. So then you can kind of do something. For example, if you want to update at each second, then you would need to keep track of time that way. Or check for win. Okay, so basically what I did here. <laughs> yeah. Is, okay. Is writing comments in my code because I'm afraid people are gonna look at it and be like, "Oh no, what is this?" <laughs> Sorry, but like, <laughs> uh, XL is basically a variable we're gonna use to check uh, who is currently moving, right? Because in tic tac toe you have X and O. Uh, oh yeah, I also need to add files because I need. Uh, oh my god, I have my images in. Can I just drag and drop? Amazing. Okay, so, oh, okay, well, ignore that. <laughs> we're just going to hope the images work. Okay, now we're going to create our window, right? Let's say the width is. Hey, can you guys upload the images like 400. in the chat or something? Or... Oh, uh, oh no, I, people can use them. I, I, I don't think anyone else has. Yeah, I'll upload them to the Discord and you guys can. Oh, wait, can I just upload? No, oh, whatever. I'll just upload. I think you can upload them to Zoom chat, right? I think. Uh, can I? Yeah. I gotta, File, file your I computer. Oh wow, technology has really evolved. <laughs> uh, okay. Show and explore. I need to grab my file path real quick. Bro, it, it doesn't. It's not letting me. It's very good. Can I? Oh, nice. Okay, so there's the X. 
There's the O, and this is the loading cover. I, I sent it twice. <laughs> My bad. Uh, okay, cool. So those are the files I'm going to be using. If you guys want to follow along, you can. Yeah. So they're Wait, just I don't think they file. sent. Oh, uh, they did. I, did they? Uh, yes, they def they definitely sent. I saved all three of them. Uh, they actually. F oh wait, no, Jake, Jake, Jake. Oh, oh. wait, no, you, you didn't send. <laughs> wait, them. I direct I directly sent them to Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! You DM so them to me because no. I was like, I got them, but how did nobody else oh, get them? No. <laughs> you DM so them okay. to me. Okay, they're, nice one. They're, 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 uh... Uh, and I, and then, okay, wait, so how, do, how do they upload the images to Replit? Yeah, or like you any, should, you any should, you should show I just them dragged that. and dropped them in from yeah. their folder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you want to show them what the pictures look like? I, I thought I did that already. Oh, okay. yeah, okay. Um, All right, oh, cool. yeah, now it works. Uh, that's the X, amazing. That's the loading screen, amazing. Yeah. And that's the O, amazing. amazing. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> Why are they so sketchy? <laughs> <laughs> I randomly downloaded some online X and we oh. definitely use, didn't use the most scuffed images we could find. Definitely not. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna just pre-create a color here because yeah. like I don't wanna write this tooth bowl every time I need to use uh if you don't know what a color key is, it's a three digit number that uh th I mean not a three digit number, three three digit three three digit numbers that are rep from zero to two fifty-five that represent a specific color which is the RGB index of that color. So for example, white would have RGB of 255, 255, 255. Another way you can represent this is as you can use kind of hexadecimal form, but it's obviously easier to use a tuple uh, to represent colors. And if you want to, you can even search them up. Like if you have a uh, color that you don't know how to represent, just search up the RGB for that uh, color and yeah. So here I'm just creating a 2D array to um, literally be the board. Uh, I'm just gonna copy and paste that a little. Now you have yes. none of uh, uh, an array, a uh, 2D array that is completely filled with none. Uh, if you're you in Java, also this is probably times. gonna be a bit triggering because you can't do this in Java. <laughs> in, in Python, you can just multiply things by three and it'll work. You can just do like, all sorts of weird things. <laughs> Yeah. You can even do this like none times three times three, which even works as well. Which is, yeah, which it's is really it. weird. <laughs> but Python, you can just do crazier stuff, except it's just slower. So. Yeah. So here, this is you're gonna need this whenever you use uh, whenever you use Pygame, you're gonna need to do pg dot in it, because up here I imported Pygame as pg, so I do pg dot in it here. Okay, I thought it was giving me an error. That scared me. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't import as PG, you're going to have to do pygame dot in it. So in the end, it's really just importing as PG really just saves you a lot of like keyboard slamming, yeah. so to speak. And um, here I'm going to create, well, I'm not really going to create it yet, but uh, you can set FPS in games. And I'm just going to use local... 30 fps because i don't want to break my computer accidentally if it like breaks the code yeah i'm just going to set it to 30. this doesn't actually set the fps to 30. i'm going to use that variable later on just saying uh and i'm going to create a clock variable which is pg.time.clock this basically creates a clock which is similar to in java like something dot sleep or dot delay it's basically to help you like delay uh, screens and scenes so like you can process things. It's like a loading screen helping thing. Wait, why uh, don't we do pg.time instead of the actual time module? pg.time.clock is more helpful. When yeah, it's just, it's just more help. Yeah, it's just, you can also use time.clock, but pg actually ties uh, it to time, which is, yeah, and also it makes it easier. This, this type of clock can uh, set FPS limiting and stuff like that. Uh, okay, I'm not going to put that there because it's self-explanatory. <laughs> and now we're going to create the screen, which is what's going to be like your window if you don't use replit uh, dot display. But here, your, your, your window is on the right here. I think, I think that's how this works. Yes. Display dot set mode 
And then you'll have the size, which is, I'm going to put the width, uh, the height, plus 100, because I'm going to have a bottom bar. You'll see later on why I need that. I'm going to have 0 as that and 32 there. And so on the right, Replit is actually super nice. It actually uh, displays all the um, all the uh, parameters you put in. So that width and a height plus 100 is the size. Flags are 0, and the depth is 32. I think that's how that works. <laughs> I think that's how that works. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I am definitely not just a ripoff Pygame uh, coder that they hired. Uh, so setting the caption, you can just say, uh, hi, my window, or whatever you want your window to be called. Uh, yeah. That's basically setting the title of your window, so to speak. Also, before I continue, uh, does anybody have any questions? Maybe we can answer some questions in the chat. And maybe you can got, we can slow down for you to kind of copy down <clears throat> what, what he's writing, uh, if you guys need it. And then we yeah. can also answer some questions in the chat. Let's see. You know, scroll down and answer any non meme questions. <laughs> uh, where do you guys get these Pi game functions? Like, is there a place where you can find uh, them? Yeah, Jerry showed them. It was uh, the Pi game. The API. Yeah, yeah, the API for Pi game. Uh, you just find the one you want. For example, yeah, you can show them too. Yeah. Pi game. API, yeah. API Pi game dot org. Yep. You can read all this documentation, Pog. <laughs> and also, if you don't want to read it, uh, maybe you can like look, look, go down a bit. Uh, it, you, if you see, like each of these has their own description, so you know which one you want to look at. Let's say you're dealing with the, uh, let's say Pi game. Let go to go to display, for example. Let's say you're dealing with the display. Display, yeah. Let's say you're dealing with a display, right? So you you're gonna know that you want to go to Pygame or display because you can see the description. And then there are also descriptions for each of these. So whichever one you want, you can kind of use. So maybe what was one of them you did? Uh, what was one of the uh ones you did? Uh, for example, PG display dot set mode. So go to, for example, go to set mode. Oh, sh that's not no, not bookmark. <laughs> yeah, uh, just show it for set mode. Set mode, yes, right here. Yeah. Uh, so wait, here. No, that's set icon. <laughs> yeah. It's use. Set mode is used for other things as well. So yeah, P Pi game not set mode. Yeah, here. And you can kind of read through the documentation, even if you don't want to. You can kind of skim through it, and there are going to be some examples of how to do it. Like for example, that thing, right? Like down here, this yeah. basic example. So you can see this. For example, it's Pi game to set mode screen width, screen height. Right. That's going to be a simple way to set the screen. Exactly. And there I, are also ways to search. When you click on it. the examples, it'll take you here, and you can like look through all this. See like. Uh, import pi game pi game in it, which is what we did, except we imported pi game as PG, so we didn't have to type out pi game completely. And I'm getting mass pinged in Discord. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, uh, and then you can do screen equals pi game dot display dot set mode, and then yeah, blah blah blah. You'll see a bunch of examples through here. Wait, okay. uh, how come you use uppercase on clock content? Oh, okay. This this is actually kind of cool. But Martin, the reason we use uppercase is because some things that we want to, like there are certain constants or certain things that are e that are either like uh, terms that we that are really important, like for example the clock, or that are taken, right? So we have to use it. For this one, clock isn't taken, but it's really important. So every time we write clock, we need to use like complete uppercase for them. The other ones aren't as important, but the clock is going to be used a lot. So we need to emphasize that, which is kind of why we use it. Uh, so it's not completely inconsistent, inconsistent code. There's kind of a reason though, to, to, to be fair, it is kind of inconsistent, right? Why do you, where do you, where do you get the non-variable? Oh, the non-variable is basically means just means nothing. So if you initialize something, but you don't know what value to give it, just give it none. Kind of like, I don't know what to do, so I'm just going to give it none. Or my mass copy and pasting. I just yeah, don't exactly. want to write the entire thing again. That's what Albert said. <laughs> uh, oh, dot modified PNG. And then you can't call these the exact same thing. So X image, I'm going to say that. And then perhaps. Well, I mean, image. it's also for constants, but I don't think clock is taken. Or maybe it's a different version of Pygame. Or just, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just. Okay, now we're going to go Whatever. do something. Uh, we're going to go do something uh, interesting. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, specifically. Did you want to explain so, the sentences you did? Uh, pardon? 
you want to explain these? Because <laughs> oh. I was talking over you. So uh, basically, uh, all these things are just uh, loading images. So this is just the name of the image. And if you have a directory, let's say I put them in that images folder I showed you, you would just do images slash whatever directory, right? Just like your Windows File Explorer. But we have them in the same file as main.py, so we're not going to move that. So now we're going to write the game loop, right? It's going to be while true and pg dot display update. This is to update the display. So like whenever you blit something, whenever you show something onto the screen, it will update it at this specific command. I don't know why I took away my brackets when I pressed enter. And now we do clock dot tick <laughs> FPS because you want to limit your FPS and you don't want to go at like, you don't want to burn your computer going 500 frames per second on a tic-tac-toe yes. game. And uh, this is like, this is like the basic code for like creating a window but like you'd also want something like this event in pg dot event oh no dot get yeah this is this is what you want uh and if and what does that do uh basically pg dot event dot get basically means uh if any events have happened then you go into here Right, so oh, this is cool. where you do like, if you press W, then go up. If you press S, then go down. If you base bar, blow up a nuke, I don't know. And here is where you say, if, if the event type is quit, which is basically uh, when you press the X button on the window, then pygame.exit, uh, no, dot quit. Yeah, pygame.quit, yeah. sys.exit. And sys.exit basically, because sys deals with the system, it exits the entire system, which is close to the program. Yes. And, and um, we're going to just do that. This should, this should work. So really, you don't need all this like code here. This is just like specifically for Pi game. So if I took that out, it could technically just still run on just this code. And, and I don't need that language. either, but yeah. yeah. This is the real, just this is what we call the game loop. This is where the game runs. And once it exits this loop, then the game's just over. Uh, and then now you can run. Should be able to just display. Yeah, display a window. Oh, what is this interface? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, God. What is this? Oh, Jesus Christ. No. Okay, what is this? Just, oh, my God. Uh, just what stop is this it. interface? Click stop. stop. What is this interface? No. Okay, so this is, this is actually not bad of an interface. I expected worse, <laughs> honestly. But here, you can see, um, hi, my window. We set the caption. Oh, wait, why is my computer lagging? This is not good. <laughs> I'm running 30 FPS, man. So pg.display.setCaption. Hi, my window. This created my window, right? It says, hi, my window up there. And because we did uh, pg.event.get and all this event.type, if it's equal to quit, then it should exit. Oh, it worked, Pog. Okay, Replit isn't broken. Let's go. <laughs> but yeah, this is the basics of how to open a window and yeah, just like run it, I guess. And uh, the frame limiting is important. This, if I just uh, don't, <laughs> if I set FPS to like 600, uh, my, my computer, yeah, my computer is... <laughs> Uh, my GPU temperature just went up to 90%. So I'm just, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's, that's not good for your computer. Yeah. yeah it's, it's not. <laughs> All right. So since we have a basic program, a uh, basic Pi game program for today, are there, are there any questions about how to set up a basic Pi game uh, document? I'm going to Jake check the uh, DM. Yeah, are we ending here? No, we have uh, stuff. like, we still have uh, time. We and still we can, have five minutes left. We can left. do like, no, we can things. do a tiny bit, but I don't want to like do something too big, or we might like run out of time doing something. So I just want to go for questions, and maybe we can kind of go for a bit longer. But for now, are there any questions? Well, we can do a small thing here. Uh, we didn't actually like display any images, uh, but like we we can do that next time. I I hope. Yeah, uh, I hope it's fine. <laughs> Can definitely uh, do you can do this. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I think 
I think I can just look at me. I, I can code screen dot fill. This is basically going to fill the screen with a color. Uh, the tuple you can do like two five five and burn your eyes with complete red. <laughs> it should work. No, what's up? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Ow. But, yeah, that's. <laughs> Gonna tone that down a little so I can actually look at it a little. Amazing. Be, uh, oh, I have my camera on. Hi, mom. <laughs> can you guys see my mom? <laughs> I saw her. Okay, cool. Yeah, I did. I mean, I guess my also. entire club saw my mom then. <laughs> Amazing. Right. So Amazing. here's a here's a toned down color, ugly yellow. Uh, I just put one. <laughs> you call that yellow? One hundred green and zero blue, which is why I got this color. And yeah, you can see screen.fill. If we didn't have pygame.display.update, you wouldn't be able to see it. Uh, run. Yeah, yeah because you, you it would never look, update. You had no screen. Yeah. <laughs> it just doesn't to... exist. <laughs> it literally okay. just never update. Usually right. this would be black because there's nothing being updated, but Pygame just says, I guess I won't give you a screen then if you don't. <laughs> it just doesn't exist. Yeah. It just doesn't exist. <laughs> You didn't ask an update, so it's just I time to time to yeah. leave. <laughs> and also, you can fill a certain what we call rect in the screen. This you can like do something like uh, the parameters should be of a rect angle. Uh, no, not angle. You don't angle things. You can create Rectangle. a rect and then oh. Okay, you can create a rect and then rotate it, but we're not talking about that. Screw that. That's complicated. Because the <laughs> what do you mean? I'm saying a rectangle. I know. I was. I was. Yeah. I was talking about something else. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. That's true. It might just be pi a replet using uh, actual pi game. Yeah. Yeah. So as you can hear, you can see the screen dot fill. Before it was filling the entire screen with ugly yellow. Yeah. But now, it's only low, <laughs> but now it's only the lower part with ugly yellow. So basically. <laughs> What I did here was um, I sent the x, y coordinates. So the x coordinate is zero, which is like right right here my, where my mouse is. And then it goes to 400, which goes down here. And since the height is 400 plus 100, then uh, I set the height of the rectangle to 100 and the width of the rectangle to 500. So it like covered up the area. And that's how you set the rectangle. <laughs> you can like set it to like something dumb, like 250 and then just make it like Eesh. in the middle of the screen. Nope, not 2,500, that's not <laughs> 2, That's good to be, that's yeah, literally like gonna be very, proud of the Very screen. skinny. You can stop, you can run it. We're in the middle Amazing. of your screen, yeah. And, Amazing. Yeah. Also, people are commenting on how in the while loop, you have bra you have parentheses around the true. <laughs> Oh, you have ran these wow. around the <laughs> Okay. <Yeah. laughs> right. Ignore that. I'm a, oh, also, I'm one a more Java thing. dev. <laughs> for those of you, do you want to make a text a file of the code and maybe put it for those of for those of you that want like the code sure. that you wrote so far? Just don't give them the uh, repo link. Just copy like co copy all the Literally code into a text file. Paste. Yeah, just copy it in. Hey paste guys, it. it's gonna be going into <laughs> Jerry's DMs. <laughs> Wait, why don't we just share the actual update? Oh, because like it's kind of like so they can kind of follow along. Pre, uh, they can't kind of follow much along during the last. So they... <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> you just copy paste it. Oh uh, yeah, let me see if I can just quickly save a notepad. Yeah, just uh, just do a notepad. Yeah, so what was that pop up? <laughs> Window exe. Yeah, so that's Window a code for those of you that want it. <laughs> or a, a good thing to do is that once like J uh, Jake talked about it, it's really good. But uh, what you can do is you can kind of add on to it, like add on to what you want to it. So kind of play around with it. Uh, for example, kind of just fill some random colors, play around with the uh, scaling and stuff. Just, you know, do whatever you want with it. So that's kind of a good way to learn, I guess, Pi game by experimenting. Uh, where did I see? <laughs> I saved yes. it to a random place, and now I okay, I found it. Oh, you can see the name. Okay, wow, amazing name. <laughs> what? Not, I just wanted to name it something, so it didn't like. Oh my god! Overlap Jake. with any of my other files, but like, Bro, they, yeah, there's the text. I can't I mean, even download it sick. because I'm gonna have a <laughs> cursed <laughs> file name. <laughs> my computer. You, you can rename it to like Tic Tac. Why didn't you just call it like Tic Tac Toe computer. Code? <laughs> no. Tic Tac Toe Part One. No, he had to call it uh whatever that is. <laughs> Pee Pee Poo Poo. Yeah. 
Uh, is this what you call all your files, Jake? Okay, I'll, I'll rename it so people will be more comfortable to download it. <laughs> okay. uh, Damn, our download rate finish. is going to go up by 100%. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, oh, no. All, all right. right, there we go. Let, there even go. better. A sketchy name. All right. So it is four o'clock, which means that one more thing. Uh, do you want to do a quick uh, wrap up of everything you did? And then if there are any questions, put them in the chat if you want, and we will answer them. And then, yeah, so just do a quick wrap up of what uh, you. Quick wrap up. Um, yes. I imported stuff. I, I used the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So we, we have this useless variable we didn't use. We have this useless variable. Okay. We didn't use a lot of variables, but we have the width and height declared, even though we changed the height afterwards. This horrible right. practice, by the way. <laughs> we created the board that we didn't use. We created no, just, colors just that we didn't call, use. Just call it initialization, Jake. <laughs> okay. We initialized Pygame, so we can use Pygame. Uh, we've created a clock, so we're able to set the FPS for our game. Uh, we set the FPS with a variable we initialized. <laughs> we used that variable, actually. <laughs> uh, we did pg.display.setCaption, which can, where you can like set the caption for your window, which is basically the title. We created images. Well, we initialized images uh, after, uh, using pg.image.load. I'm tripping over my own words. And we set up the very important game loop that keeps the window running. Uh, we created like screen dot fill rectangle thing. Uh, uh oh. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Broke. <laughs> Just broke <laughs> it. Rip. <laughs> okay. I thought raffle doesn't let. Uh oh. Oh god. We have some hard time you resolving that. differences between. <laughs> oh my. Uh, Who's my changes? I think so. Yeah. Alright, amazing. Right, okay. guys. Amazing. We just got doxed. Um. <laughs> For, okay. So, uh, so we like collected events and stuff, and that's all. Albert, you wanted stable file share. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why are you guys sending not a virus? I don't. I don't. I don't trust yeah, these just, to not be virus. Yeah, yeah just, just just don't click on them. That's all. And maybe Albert can disable file sharing. Anyway, just keep going. Keep going. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's basically all. We. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what? <laughs> yes. I was just saying yes. yes. Okay. And you can cool. use this. Yes, and you can use this as well for all of your Python programs. It's kind of a template that you can use. Uh, except for all of the useless variable declarations. Yeah, those are going to be used later, not for now. This yeah. is just initialized. So for next time, we don't really have to initialize everything again and go through everything. This is just basic initialization of all the variables. But yeah, the main thing you need to learn is just the Pygame game loop and how that works and you know the, how it uh, displays stuff onto the screen, how it creates a window. And yeah, that's it. So <laughs> thank you, Jake, for the great uh, explanation. Uh, wow. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew, for the uh, witty, witty comments. <laughs> yes, I've been very helpful this entire yeah. lesson. Yes, definitely. Thank you, Albert, for the actual helpful comments. <laughs> and uh, yeah, thanks everybody for coming. Uh, we'll see you next week, which we, where we will be continuing tic-tac-toe. <laughs> if there are any more questions, feel free to put them in the chat, as long as they are not viruses. All right, and uh, <laughs> that's it. So thank you for coming, and see you next week. I also, um, if you uh, missed some of the code, like <clears throat> if it went a bit too fast, then we'll be uploading this video to YouTube. So yeah, catch up. Yeah, well, so then you can read the explanation. And if you want the code, Jake can upload another version to the Discord server. So if you want that, we can kind of upload that for your reference. So yeah, that's, yep, cool. Thank Amazing. you for coming. <laughs> Goodbye. Okay. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. All right. Thank you for coming to our lesson. Uh, I, how do I stop sharing my screen? Oh, yeah. oh, no, we actually have, that. did you start recording? Uh, no, he's still cool. recording. Oh.